All right, guys, today we're talking about why the original Leatherman Super Tool is actually a really awesome tool. Now, primarily we're looking at this from the lens of vintage or collecting or adding it to a collection. As far as the original Super Tool goes, it's probably not honestly the best multi-tool to use in this day and age, especially with things like the Super Tool 300 existing, but it is a really cool tool and there was actually one feature about it that made it very unique. So first off, this is a Leatherman PST that we have here. And once again, this is an original Super Tool. I'm trying to remember the date of manufacture for this guy. Yeah, mine was made in 1997. So hopefully the camera will probably struggle to pick that up. Mine was made in 1997. So this guy is nice and old, but still very cool. So this is my Super Tool original. Once again, it's not really like designated, like this is the Super Tool 300. There was the Super Tool 200. And then of course this guy. So. The Super Tool was made not too long after the PST was originally designed, and it essentially was designed to offer a full set of hardy pliers to be a little bit big, bigger, beefier, and more robust. Now, that being said, once again, it was called the Super Tool because it was meant to have more functions, and this was really the first tool, in my opinion, that Leatherman made that actually was a really decent outdoor or potentially wilderness tool. It did include a saw, which is actually pretty cool looking. It's crazy to see how some of these tools really haven't changed that much. Like, let me show you this saw here. Like, you can see that this is the 1997 saw versus the, I think that this is like a 20... 17 yeah this guy's a 2017 so 20 years newer and you can see that th there are a little bit different changes of course the saw is a little bit longer but honestly like the tooth pattern and everything still basically the same um, so th that's kind of cool the other feature that i find really neat about the super tool the original is its fully serrated blade now this was only done this style was only done with this, um, the original Super Tool. In the Super Tool 200, the predecessor successor to this guy, it did go over to a more traditional fully serrated saw, but, or serrated saw, fully serrated blade, but this is what the modern fully serrated blade looks like for Super Tools, and this is what the original looked like. So it's really neat, it's this drop point, and personally, I think that they literally were taking their blade stock so the main blade and kind of modifying them to be that kind of not quite drop point but almost more like spear point because you can see that this is like a if you would say i would say probably more of a drop point but i think they're going for like a clip pointed blade whereas this is definitely more of a spear point and i don't know why um Leatherman chose to go with like this spear pointed um, fully serrated blade really kind of weird styling but I actually really like it I think it's pretty cool pretty unique in my opinion that they chose to do this so there are definitely some you know different unique things as far as wilderness capabilities go this is probably one of the better multi-tools that Leatherman made for the wilderness it does offer a really decent tool set um, you know you have everything that you would expect from a normal super tool. Um, once again, the fully serrated blade, the saw, the main blade, um, your different bits and drivers. And of course, this one has those as well. Uh, the actual tool set hasn't changed too much. Now, in my opinion, I am always a fan of the original um, multi-tool or the original plier bits on these multi-tools. So in the 2010s, Leatherman changed up to this interchangeable kind of cutter bit and when they did that they changed the um, plier bit to be fully coarse whereas on these original multi-tools their plier bit was fine and then it moved to coarse in the larger portion of the plier bit or head. So I really like this style. My original Leatherman Surge still has this style of a head to it and they kept it like I said for really about until the 2010s. Now, I've kept you guys waiting long enough. What is the most interesting part about the Leatherman Super Tool original? So as far as it goes, I'm gonna to try to show this. This is a little bit hard and I'm not gonna lie, these older multi-tools are not as user-friendly, but I think one of the coolest things about the original Leatherman Super Tool and something that not a lot of people talk about 
is how they did their lock on these. So it actually took them a while to come up with this more modern style of um, locking where you have these little locker tabs here that unlock and lock your tools in place. So until that was pioneered by Leatherman themselves, um, they kind of invented this system here. And so essentially what this is, is the tools are still technically a slip joint, but not really, because this is a very deep notch and very deep groove that is put into each one of these tools. So it is extremely hard to get one of these to unlock. Like I will show you guys here, um, you can see that I'm putting, well, maybe you can't see, but I'm putting a tremendous amount of force on this tool. Like you can actually see the saw blade bowing under the force that I'm putting on it and it does not unlock. So essentially these are kind of locking tools and you can see how deep the groove is for these locks to sit into. Uh, so they essentially just lock and how you would unlock one of these tools if say you were done with your saw is you would take like, let's just say, for this instance, we'll use my fully serrated blade and you just kind of lift up until there's tension like that. And you'll physically feel the tension kind of like lift off. And then at that time, you can really just take all of your tools in and then close them all. So once again, it's probably not the most user friendly because you do kind of run a risk of cutting yourself, especially with the amount of sharp blades on these tools. But uh, yeah, that's how the system works for all of these tools. So once again, say you wanted to use your file, you pull it out, this file is basically locked in place. So then what you would do, say take your main blade here, bring it up, and then you can bring them all back down. So very unique, uh, very interesting way of solving that problem. And honestly, probably one of the most robust locking mechanisms or maybe non-locking mechanisms on a multi-tool because like I said, it's, uh, there, there's, it's kind of a lock, but it's not really a lock. And that was kind of Leatherman's answer to trying to keep those tools in a locked position until you were done with them. Once again, definitely not the cleanest way. And I think one of the things I like the most about the Leatherman Super Tool is the fact that um, with the Leatherman Super Tool, they were really trying to innovate. Like it almost feels a lot of these early Leatherman Super Tools almost, or a lot of these Leatherman, early Leatherman tools feel almost like prototypes, you know? Like I said, there's so much unrefined nature to them that when you handle something like a Super Tool 300, you know, this is very refined. You know, you pull out a tool, it locks definitively into its place. You know, you can unlock it. Like this feels like a production tool, right? Like this guy feels clean, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But back in the early days, which once again, we're only talking 1997 here, like this is not that long ago. Um, you know, these were still kind of like prototype tools. You know, these were not the most refined uh, tools out there and uh, very hard to, to actually like get some of these because the nail nicks themselves, as you can see, they put the nail nick like on the grind of this, um, can opener so like back here you have good groove but up here there's really nothing for your nail to lock into so these things are honestly kind of tricky to use and another one that I find so comically funny to use is the um, the flathead or sorry the Phillips head screwdriver this is supposed to be your nail nick right here but good luck trying to like when this thing is in the tool good luck trying to reach down and grab that like it's uh, so funny how they designed these things they are not very user-friendly at all, but uh, they, they do work. Once again, you have a full three-dimensional um, Phillips head screwdriver right there, and it's pretty solid. Once you have it like out, you know, you have a good tool, but uh, it's just getting the tool out. That's honestly the pain in the butt. Anyways, guys, that is a kind of overview and overlook of the Leatherman Super Tool, the original. This is what the scales look like. Mine is not in the best of best conditions. I think overall it's like pretty good, just really used, really worn, like a lot of them are in that time and generation. So I definitely like my older Leatherman tools. I think they're really cool because they, like I said, they feel so prototypey to me that, you know, there's so much unrefinement to them that, uh, you know, using something like a Leatherman Charge Plus and then going back to using something like a Super Tool or even this uh, PST here, you know, it's, it's really almost comical. I mean, this thing, 
um, like if you hold it in just the right way, you can actually get the blade to just like, just poke out like this. Like I've almost cut myself so many times. Cause uh, like say, if you're not really careful, like say you pull out um, this guy right here and then you just, just do it just right. You can get this blade to poke out a little bit. Uh, that time wasn't the best example, but yeah, and it can like nick you cause it's just right there, that sharp edge. So yeah, definitely unrefined, but really cool multi-tools and I still really like using them. And the coolest thing I think about these Leatherman multi-tools is the fact that you can still usually find them for pretty darn good prices. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.